God bless you. So glad that you are all here today. I have this esteemed honor of hearing the bio of Dr. Angela D. Mosby. Dr. Angela D. Mosby is the former Deputy Director for the Office of Public Affairs and the Office of State and Congressional Relations. In addition, she is the former Human Resources Officer for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. With over 30 years of federal government experience, Dr. Mosby recently transitioned into teaching and mentoring graduate students at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. In addition to teaching at American Public University Systems in the School of Business, she received her Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and a Master of Science in Administration with a concentration in Human Resources Management from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Dr. Mosby earned a PhD in Organization and Management from Capella University in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Her dissertation, Exploring Older Men Workers, Full Employee Engagement and Knowledge Sharing in Federal Sector Success, an exploratory qualitative inquiry focused on employee engagement, knowledge sharing, transformation change, and leadership. Dr. Mosby has a strong passion and talent to teach students who are working adults with a desire for continuous learning. She believes classroom and online teaching offer the opportunity to touch the lives of a diverse audience, to, be to better prepare them for leading the future. Any free time is spent watching movies, gardening, traveling, and spending quality time with her family. She is happily married with two adult sons, a daughter-in-law, and two grandchildren, ages seven and four, who affectionately call her Dr. Mom Mommy. <laughs> At this time, we ask that you put your hands together and receive for your impartation, amen, Dr. Angela D. Mosby. Thank you so much for that very, very warm welcome. I want to first thank the Philadelphia Chapter of Network for inviting me to your annual network team. A special thanks go to the Philadelphia Chapter and National Leadership Team, including your President, Cynthia Watts, and your Vice President, Charmaine Nashville. I also want to take one moment and acknowledge my soulmate, my best friend of 43 years, for he is celebrating 40 years of service with the U.S. Postal Service. Jonathan. I was asked to share my story, to share my journey with all of you ladies today. And this is the first time anyone has ever asked me to do that. So thank you very much for this opportunity to reflect on the, work, on the walk that I have taken to get to this point. You know, we see people and we see where they are now. But we forget they didn't just roll out of bed and end up there. So this is an opportunity to share with you what it has taken for me to reach this point in my life. I'm a graduate from Albany High School in Philadelphia. And I was accepted into five different colleges, but I selected Lincoln University. I was driven up to main campus and unpacked and started classes. And then in the mail, I received a notice of employment from the US Postal Service for a full-time permanent position with benefits and a very good starting salary. <laughs> I really didn't know what to do. I said, here's a chance to really earn some money and back when this was going on, everybody wanted to work for the post office. So I talked to my, my mother, I talked to 
my good friend Jonathan, and I had to, to think, why am I at Lincoln? And the reason was that I had decided that I wanted to go to college since I was eight years old. And so I was pursuing a dream. Now I have to admit that I didn't know I was going to end up at a four-year school because I didn't know if I was smart enough. And it was my good friend Jonathan who tutored me through school in some of those courses that were a challenge for me. So here I was at a four-year school. And I said, well, now that I'm here and I've already unpacked, I'll stay. It was a very hard decision. But it was a good decision. I earned a Bachelor's of Art degree in political science. During my time at Lincoln, I participated in cooperative education. It was a brand new program at the school at the time, and I was one of the first 12 students who signed up for it. This led me to my first federal job with the National Park Service. I worked at Independence Hall, and later I worked at Valley Forge National Historical Park, giving tours and lectures, and doing living history programs. I wore colonial clothes, dressy ones, for I wasn't a slave woman. I was a free woman from Paris who was at, Nash, at the uh, George Washington headquarters, and that is historically accurate. After um, I worked um, in between the co-op assignment, I graduated. I completed the four-year undergrad program in three years. First job after graduation paid less than the job that was offered to me by the U.S. Postal Service. <laughs> I wondered if I had made a mistake. But I was determined to make it in the federal government. I accepted every opportunity in my, in my federal uh, career to move forward. And I went where opportunities would take me. I worked for the following agencies. After I graduated, I worked for the National Park Service in their public affairs office. And then I worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And then I moved on to the Department of Defense Navy. I worked at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard. Very interesting job. I handled all of their top secret and secret documents that came to the Naval Base. Then I worked for Naval Aviation Engineering Service Unit and Naval Air Engineering Center as a training officer, which began my human resources career. I then branched on to become a human resources specialist, and later I was an acting HR manager. Continuing to work my way up the ladder, I moved to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Region 3 in Philadelphia. I was an HR generalist when I was first hired, which meant that I covered staffing, classification, employee and labor relations, and employee development. I was later promoted to be branch chief. At EPA, I became the first African-American female deputy human resources officer. I went to Lincoln again, only this time I wanted to pursue a Master's of Science in Administration. It was a two-year program. I finished the program in 18 months. My thesis was entitled, The Impact of Mandatory Hiring Consideration Programs in the Federal Government, because there was a problem with finding qualified minorities for positions for engineers and scientists, or so they thought. I developed a plan. The plan was adopted. It became a benchmark and best practice for EPA. We were recognized by the Office of Personal Management. And because of the results of hiring 48% minority female um, into engineering science positions, 
I received the bronze medal for successful hiring, making a difference in diversity in the technical field. When the human resources officer position opened up, I was the only applicant with a master's degree with a concentration in human resources management. When I was offered the position, I became the first minority human resources officer in the history of VPA Region 3 in Philadelphia. After holding the position of HRO for 10 years, I was ready for a new challenge. Because we have to examine where we are, even though we've made it to a certain point in our, in our goals and in our strides, we have to keep developing and growing. So, another opportunity came my way. Lincoln University and Cheney negotiated with EPA to have me come as a visiting scholar in residence. This was the first time this has ever happened. EPA designed a mobility agreement for me to liaison with both universities full time for four years under the Intergenerational Personnel Act, um, or IPA. While at Lincoln, I taught and mentored graduate students. I was the only female on the Capstone Research Board, all male PhDs. At Cheney, uh, I worked with their director of the science department to recruit students for internship positions in the federal government. I recommended students who were successfully hired into career ladder positions with EPA and other agencies, and for me that was one of my proudest accomplishments because it's very, very hard to get into the federal sector today, as you know. But during this time, I realized my new passion was teaching graduate students. When my four years was up, I returned to EPA, and I had completed my PhD one week after I got there and finished my PhD. The director of the graduate program at Lincoln um, had actually inspired me to go to get a PhD. Now, I was resistant at first because I'd already worked for 30 years. And you figure you've worked over 30 years, you know, you've served your time. <laughs> I knew going for a PhD would really mean a lot of work. And I knew I'd have to be the one to do it. So I asked myself the following questions. Why do you want to do this? Do I have the energy to do this? Do I have the focus to do this? Do I have family support to do this? Do I have the finances to do this? Lord, will you help me do this? And I decided to go for it. Three years later, I successfully completed my PhD with a 4.0. My dissertation has since become a benchmark at Capella for current PhD students using exploratory qualitative inquiry methodology. My research sample group included individuals from 13 different agencies, including the U.S. Postal Service. And I thank you for the, your representation. So, after this accomplishment, I was offered a position at EPA as the Deputy Director for the Office of Public Affairs and the Office of State and Congressional Relations. Um, and I was asked to step into the position to mentor the directors of the program, if you can believe that. It was an honor to serve in that capacity. But once again, I was the first minority and the first female that ever held the deputy positions in those two offices. Well, I believe I made a difference in the organization as the deputy. But when I reached my 34th year of federal service, I knew it was time to pursue my new passion of teaching adult learners at the graduate level. I did research and networked with other PhD colleagues and obtained a position at American Public University System teaching graduate students in the School of Business and Management. 
And what's very interesting about where the Lord can place you is that the American public university system, their enrollment clients are the military and public sector employees. What a special fit for me. I also continue to teach at Lincoln University. So in conclusion, I'd like to challenge each of you today. Ask yourself, am I pursuing my passion? If you are, keep doing it. But if you're not, explore the possibilities. Network by reaching out to people and establish or renew some relationships. Make sure you're prepared physically, mentally, and emotionally to seize the moment when that opportunity comes along. Explore taking the next step in your education. Learning is a lifelong journey. It is never too late to be a participant. Thank you very much.